morning, New Horizon, and welcome to morning worship. It is indeed a blessing and an honor for all of us to be up this morning, and we give God praise and thank Him for just another day's journey. And I pray that you have a very blessed day thus far, and if you have not, it might be because you did not tune in to Life Application where Brother Shelley did an awesome job teaching and sharing with us concerning the importance of us carrying out our personal duty concerning love. And I simply want to say thanks to him and our hats go off to him for a job well done. Just a few housekeeping uh, chores that I do want to remind us of and that is uh, let us continue to practice our social distancing and also the wearing of our mask. Uh, those things are extremely important, and I know that sometimes we think it's because I don't want to do it, but you do it because you want to also protect the other person as well. So please, ma'am, and please, sirs, continue doing that, and if there are any personal problems or issues that may come up, Feel free to call us here at the church at 423-622-2077. And as I have reminded us over and over again, uh, if no one answers, please leave a message so that we will be able to return your phone call. Also, say thanks to all of you who uh, see a need and have continued to be a good giver. Your tithes and your offerings can be dropped off here at the church, uh, like today, uh, Sunday, from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m., and Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Or you may use our Giblify app. But I just simply want to say thank you so very much for understanding the importance of us doing our part. And also, I want to remind all of us on, on today, that is the last day for the dropping off of food here at the church. You may do so concerning our annual food drive from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. today. Uh, but I do want to say thank you so very much for a number of you who have just done a fantastic job. It is always important that you don't lose sight that whatever God has blessed you with, that you take the time to give to somebody else, and God will turn right around and give right back to you. So I want to say thank you, but uh, today will be the very last day, and so you have up until 6 p.m. today to drop off, and keep in mind it is non-perishable items but thank you so very, very much. And I promise you that what you have done, God's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings. Amen. Also, I do want to speak to those of you who are in District 5. Uh, on today at 6 p.m., you can come out and meet uh, Minister Isaiah Hester who is going to make his official announcement concerning uh, running for city council, and that is for District 5. And the location is going to be at Washington Hills Recreation Center today at 6 p.m. So we encourage those of you who are in that district to come out and meet this young man who no doubt has a a plan in place to um, render service for the city. So please, ma'am, and please, sirs, those of you here in that district, um, today at 6 p.m., come out and meet Isaiah Hester. Let us now uh, take note of our uh, prayer meditation. Um, get your Bibles and your pencil and paper together let us read our meditation dear Lord I come before thee as an empty vessel 
Open my ears that I might hear. Open my eyes that I might see. Open my mind that I might understand. Open my heart that I may receive your word. Once again, we are doing our study. Um, we're still with our theme. Our theme happens to be, ain't no need to worry. And this is taken from Paul's writings out of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And we have gotten a, a nice little distance into the text. I do want to remind you of those things that we have already discussed. We, we looked at verse 1 of the text and it is there that Paul talked to us about the secret of security. And he shared with us the importance of standing fast in the Lord. Then we locked in uh, verses 2 and 3 where he talked to us about the secret of unity. And there he said that we were obligated to stand in peace. And then we looked at verse 4 of the text where we shared with you that Paul then uh, talked about the answer to worry. And on today, we want to continue. And that is, I want to pick up on where we left off on last Sunday. And we left off at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6a. And it was there that we took the time and share it with you where Paul simply said be anxious for nothing and it was based on that portion of verse 6 that we talked about do not worry about anything do not worry about anything in today's message we want to continue by looking now at verse 6b and seven verse six b and seven listen now out of the new king james version what the apostle paul says paul continues now and he says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Based on verse 6b and all of verse 7, we want to talk about pray about everything. Pray about everything. Now, I know I just read for your hearing verse 6b in all of 7. But the way in which we want to tackle this is in part. So the first thing I want to consider for right now is verse 6b. And keep in mind, it is here that the Apostle Paul says, But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, the first thing that I want to share with you that we're going to take a look at here in verse 6b is that the Apostle Paul makes a very strong and powerful contrast, a contrast between the issue of worry and the matter called faith. Paul makes this contrast. Now this is seen in the text. Let me share with you. Uh, and I'm very well aware of where we, what we dealt with on last Sunday. But if you look now in your Bibles. This is seen in what we call a transitional adversative. And that happens to be the word but. Which begins verse 6b Paul starts that verse off with the word but but in order now 
to understand this contrast, we might take in consideration, and I want to share with you two very important points, two very important transitional issues that we might fully grasp what Paul is actually saying to us in the text. First of all, it's very important that we recognize and do not forget the transitional point that Paul made in verse 5 of the text. So if you would back up and kind of check your notes, the reason why this is important is because it's going to allow us to have clarity regarding what it is that Paul is getting ready to say. So allow me to back up for just a moment so that we can make the proper spiritual connection. Keep in mind now, in verse 5 of the text, Paul made a request regarding the matter I'm calling it yieldingness. Yieldingness. And to yield is rather simple. It simply means to place one at one's disposal or it means to present or it could also mean to offer as a sacrifice now, keep that in mind we've already dealt with what Paul talked about in verse 5 now if that is the case then then this is an act of the will primarily based on the knowledge we have of what Christ has already done for us. So you got to know what it is that the Lord has already done in our favor. So the Apostle Paul mentions to us in verse 5 about the matter of yieldingness, but he explains it for us in Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Now listen to what he says. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Then he says, and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable perfect will of God. Now keep that in mind. I want you to stay focused on Paul's explanation in Romans chapter 12 verse 1. So the first thing that we must understand in verse 5 of the text is that Paul talks about a an act of yieldingness. Then, here in verse 6b down to 7, keep that word yieldingness right in your, in your notes. Here's the point. When we arrive now at verse 6b and 7, Paul notes the requirements of prayerfulness. This is what he wants. He, he adds to yieldingness to prayerfulness. Note what he does. In these verses that we're going to deal with, Paul is showing us, and here's what I want us to grasp from the very onset. Paul is going to teach us that effective prayer comes about through the yielding of one's self to the leadership and power of the Holy Spirit. Let me explain what I'm saying. Many times we, we wrestle in our prayer life because we fail to yield ourselves to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We get wrapped up and tied up in what we want to do, how we want to do it, when we want to answer, what it is we want. Yeah. But we got to understand Paul lays it out plain and simple. You got to yield yourself yeah, yeah. to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And the reason why this is so important, it connects exactly to what Paul mentioned, and I've just finished reading 
it to us in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. In other words, Paul is saying, do not constantly allow sin to reign in your mortal body so that you are constantly obeying its lust. So, see, the point is, when we yield to him, we get rid of our will. And we focus primarily on his will. Okay? So you, in order for us, this, this is before we even undertake the pulling apart of 6B and 7, there has to be a yielding to have an effective prayer life. If you don't yield to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you can find yourself just talking concerning prayer. All right? Now let's go forward. So if we are going to, based on Paul's writings, conquer worry and experience what we've been calling a secure mind. In order to do that, we must meet some conditions that God has laid out in the text. Now we got to meet those conditions if we're going to conquer this matter called worry. Okay? And what I want to make sure you understand is that I'm going to jump ahead and lock in some things. We're not going to get to all of this on today, but I need you to make sure you get it down in your notes. In verses 6 down to 9, the Apostle Paul lays out three conditions. Three conditions. First condition is what I'm calling right praying. And right praying is found in verses 6 and 7. Then he moves from that and he presents the second condition. And the second condition is right thinking, which is verse 8. Then the third condition is right living, which you will find in verse 9. Now, I wrestled with whether I was going to go ahead and give you all of that, knowing that we're not going to deal with it right now, but I need you to understand all three conditions are necessary. But what I want you to take note of, notice now that our text comes from the very first condition which is right praying okay now looking now just at 6b let's 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 put 7 on hold just looking at 6b we see that the apostle paul just in that portion of the verse presents to us four concepts of prayer these four pro, uh, concepts of prayer are given as the divine remedy for a troubled soul. I'm going to show them to you, and they are just in 6b. Now, these four concepts all contribute to a proper understanding of a comprehensive nature of a person's prayer life. Please understand what Paul is deliberately doing in the text, okay? So the first thing I want to do right now is that we want to undertake talking about the very first of the four concepts found in verse 6b. Very first one. Well, the first one is the word prayer. Notice in your Bible, it is where The Apostle Paul declares, but in everything by prayer. So prayer is the very first of the four concepts that Paul mentions in verse 6b. Now let's play with that a moment. The first thing we need to understand is that the word prayer comes from a Greek word called prosike. 
prosike. Now let's go in depth so we can understand the terms Paul is using in, in verse 6b. First of all, the word prayer that Paul uses here is a very common word for prayer. It always means prayer as it is addressed to God. Prayer as it is addressed to God. In fact, it is what I call the general invocation of God in which a believer, and that is whether it's a woman or a man, doesn't matter, but where they give their adoration, their devotion, and their worship. Okay? Now, that word prayer that Paul uses there is also used in 1 Timothy 2 and 1. And it is here, and listen to, listen to the word. He says, therefore, I exalt, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. You see, that passage of scripture is in connection with uh, the concept of assembly prayer. Okay? Assembly prayer. But once again... Paul wants us to understand a very important point. And here's what Paul is stretching, stressing to us right here. Paul is saying, whatever happens, you got to get it now, whatever happens in life, we need to take it to the Lord in prayer. Whatever happens in life, we need to take it to the Lord in prayer. And I need you to hear me loud and clear. Whatever happens in life, we need to take it to the Lord in prayer. It is an awesome blessing just to know that we as Christians do not have to go through any kind of initiation concerning how am I going to get from this point to that point into the presence of God. That, that means I don't need you to vote on whether I can go into his presence. I don't need anybody's approval to get into God's presence. I don't have to go through some form of a ceremony, no recipe, not to get into God's presence. Can I prove it? Yes. Glad you asked me. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. Listen what the word says. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So that means we need to stop acting as though we got to wait on somebody else to give us the connection to get into his presence. Okay? And, 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 I, and I'm not making fun of anybody, but now that, 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 that we're not assembled in the building, we, 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 we can't just walk up and, and ask somebody to pray for me. You, you're responsible now for your own prayer life. So you must understand, he wants us to come boldly don't, don't, don't be afraid. Don't, 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 don't feel you got to wait on somebody. The word says, having boldness to enter the holiest. But notice how? By the blood of Jesus. So you got to recognize and know that there's a connection. You've accepted his gift of his dying and suffering on the cross. And more importantly, his resurrection. Then if that's not enough, let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. He said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So he wouldn't make such a statement if there was a shortage on mercy and grace. There is not a shortage on neither of the two. The problem is... We don't come boldly to the throne of grace. Now I, wanna, I want you to notice something in the text. 
something kind of odd but powerful. Notice the term that Paul uses. Look back in your Bibles. Notice now that Paul declares, but in everything by prayer. He, he didn't just say pray. He said, but by everything prayer. Here's what's going on. The first thing is that we recognize that the Holy Spirit reveals to us that we are to pray about everything. And when I say everything, that means everything. Back, put it down in your notes. This shows us the idea that believers are to be led exclusively by the Holy Spirit. And that means in all things. So if you are to go into his presence and pray about everything, then that means that we have been given the opportunity to be led by the Holy Spirit in all things. That word everything is powerful. It also teaches us that God has the final say so. So what's been happening is we've been allowing the enemy to hold us back and we start speculating as to whether or not God can do this or whether God, that's not your call. You got to bring what the text actually says before God and that's everything. That means that we as Christians got no business holding back nothing. Don't, don't let Satan tell you uh, God doesn't have the time or that doesn't make any sense. i much rather get a no and know he heard me than to hold back and I never will know what his answer might be. So in the text, he says what? Everything. So what Paul is saying to us when he uses the word prayer He's bringing something back to our remembrance. Paul is saying this. He's saying, remember, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. In fact, we can just stop and, let, let, and finish at that point. Remember, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. You can already sense that we already messed up, okay? Because many times we worry, it's just in the opposite, about everything and pray about nothing, okay? But Paul says, remember, don't worry about anything. Listen to the term, but pray about everything. Everything. So the first thing Paul says in the text is pray. That's the first one. Then the second one is the word supplication. Supplication. Listen now, listen to Paul in the text. Paul declares, but in everything by prayer and supplication. That word supplication comes from a Greek word which mean, which is pronounced deasis. Here's what, it, what, what Paul is teaching us. It refers then to a desperate cry to help arising from need. Let me, let me say it again. It means a desperate cry to help arising from need. Now, I, I want to play with that for just a moment. I found out how, to, how people move from a pretty prayer to a desperate prayer. You see, if you listen to what I said, if the need is really a need, Everybody hear me? If a need is really a need, 
you got no problem being desperate. But I found out people offer pretty prayers when they've gotten their needs and their wants confused. But when you really recognize a need, you ain't got time to be pretty or cute. When he says supplication, it has reference to a desperate cry for help. And that's what much, is much needed in the body of Christ today. I'm not throwing away or getting rid of any, any kind of teaching and training while in seminary regarding what prayer is all about. But there comes a moment in a believer's life that you have to let go and let God and become desperate. So it, the emphasis of what Paul presents in the verse by using the word supplication is centered on a sense of need. And, and, and I'm not always talking about material things. There, there are moments that Satan messes with you and, and troubles your, your, your spirit with your joy. Okay? And, and, and to me, that's a desperate need. So we must understand no need. Get this now. No need outweighs the supplier. Got me? So, so don't let Satan... Cause you to think that your need is so great, God doesn't have the time. No, I got proof. Paul helps us in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. He says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And my God, see, you, you got to listen to the statement, my God. See, I want to know right now. Let's leave the need alone. Can you boldly stand up and say, he's my God? Because if you got a personal relationship with him, then you can read the rest of the statement. Shall supply. And notice what he said. All. That goes back. You will never know that all until you start focusing on praying about everything. The two go hand in hand. And your need according to what? His riches in what? Glory by Christ Jesus. Not Walmart. Okay? Not the bank. But according to his riches in glory. But that, that, that right there alone is enough to make you holler. It's also found in 1 Timothy 2 and 1. Okay? Therefore, I exalt, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men. Boy, y'all, is used regarding the Lord Jesus himself in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. Who in the day of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, with vehement cries and the tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Now that's, that's the Lord. Now if the Lord can get ugly and recognize a need and a hook up with the Father, how much more should we as believers stop being cute and, and pretty and get down to the near, real nitty gritty every now and then yeah. a believer needs to find their secret closet yeah. where you can just let it hang out and cry and scream and holler and let go and some folk might say it don't take all that but that's not what Paul is teaching us yeah. in the text yeah. so here's what Paul when Paul uses this word supplication He's saying, in essence to us, it is personal and it refers to the desperate end of a business matter concerning a person's prayer life, which helps us to understand it must be specific and it must be intense. And you, you, th that's what's missing sometimes with the absence of the anointing and the presence of God because we're so interested in, in making sure we pray right and dot every I and cross every T that we think we're talking to people instead of God. 
And you got to be very careful in that area. Okay? You got to keep in mind this awesome statement. Listen to it. Nothing whew, is too great for God's power. Nothing so small that it is beyond his care. Don't you ever let anybody tell you that ain't worth taking before God. Don't let somebody come tell you that's too much to give to God. I serve a, all, a God with almighty power. And all you have to do is understand you need to come boldly to the throne. Well then, Paul, you got two words. First, prayer. Second, supplication. The third word that Paul uses, and I want you to watch this now, because I'm going to jump over something deliberately in the text. Okay? And use something last, but I, I don't want to lose you. Just follow me along. The third one is the word request. Listen to how Paul declares this. Look at the text. He says, let your requests be made known to God. That word request comes from a Greek word which simply means item all. Item all. But now let's, let's go in depth on what Paul is talking about. It refers to something asked. Yeah. Paul is talking about a petition. Okay? Now, when he uses this, I need you to understand that it is much more explicit than the word supplication. Okay? Much more explicit. It refers to a definite, precise petition. In other words, you need to know what you need from God and stop beating around the bush. Get to the point. Some of us do better at shopping than we do praying. Let me help you out. Because when you go in the store to shop, you got a list. And you go, exa you go, you know if you need sugar, you get sugar. If you got to get bread, you get bread. If you know you need milk, you're going to get milk. Why is it that when it comes to talking to God, we go all the way around the mulberry bush? We do everything other than get to the point. Example of this is found in James' writings. If you need something, get to the point and say it. James tells us in James chapter 1, verse 5. James says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Yeah. Plain and simple. Yeah. Wisdom. Now, if he can give you wisdom, then just imagine how much more he can give you if you just learn how to ask. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't, we, we, we're so busy telling God about stuff God already knows. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm being as serious as I possibly can. Get to the point. If you need healing, tell him. If you need food on the table, tell him. If you need strength and you've gotten weak, tell him. But this is not the time to pretend. Get to the point. So I ain't got no business out in the garden area if I'm looking for, 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 for meat and, and, and sugar and snacks. Go where you need to go. Get what you need to get. And get to the point. If that's not enough, John tells us even more concerning the issue of request. Listen to what he says. John in 1 John chapter 5 verse 15, he says, And if we know that he hears us, whoa, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Now listen to me good. You got to be careful when you pray that you don't talk yourself out your own blessing. Yeah. When you get up, your attitude ought to be, I got it. Yeah. It's mine. How do you know it's mine? I've already talked to the supplier. Yeah. And the supplier informed me there is no shortage. No shortage. I hope y'all getting this. 
it is so important. He says that I know that I got the request. It's mine. I said it. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Why? If we know he heard. Yeah. And God ain't hard of hearing. Yeah. God is not hard of hearing. Oh, yeah. oh, last one. Last one. Last one. The fourth word. The fourth word. I deliberately jumped over this one because of the power of the word. Paul used it in the text. But I took it out of the order in which it was in. And I took it based on the power in which it serves. And the word is thanksgiving. That's the fourth word. Listen to what Paul did. Look. Listen to the phrase. Paul says, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. This means that all prayers should be accompanied by the spirit of thanksgiving. You got me? That, that, that goes back now to prayer, to supplication, to requests. Paul climaxes that thing and uses that word thanksgiving. But notice now, he didn't just say thanksgiving. He said with thanksgiving. That means that the phrase with thanksgiving takes in all that God has done in the past and it also takes in all that God's going to do for the future. Now, boy, I'm going to put you right in the middle and, and pray you can get this. How can you pray a defeated prayer when you look back and realize what God did for you then? Oh, then you turn around and anticipate what God's going to do. And you can base what he's going to do on the assurance of what he has done. Now, 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 come on, come on. That by itself is enough to make you stand still and realize God is an awesome God. Paul says, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. Listen to this, listen to this, listen. Christians should always enter into the presence of the Lord with thanksgiving despite our circumstances. Yes, yes, that's right. now, now listen to me. If you're going to come boldly into his presence, then you must understand you have to come. Don't, don't, don't come in there with your list up front. You got to come in in a spirit of thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Why? The believer should thank God not only for the answers of past prayers, but a believer ought to be thankful for the answers that God's going to give in the future. Yeah. Nah. See, this is where Satan, Satan defeats us. He gets us because many of us are so focused on what we want right now. Sometimes you have to shout and praise God on yesterday's blessings. Just on yesterday. Because you are anticipating what God is going to do for you on today. It takes faith. Boy, y'all better. I'm almost out your hair. It takes faith to thank God for uncomfortable circumstances or to thank him of requests that he has not yet granted. Boy, y'all, how many folk have prayed and given up because you time God and you must understand the answer to your prayer is connected to the season in your life. And there are moments that God will bless you with the right season and that's when the answer to your prayer will come. Yes, it will. Oh, yeah, it will. but it takes faith. See, when you don't have no faith, you are in trouble simply because you're walking around all depressed. You can't thank God because your problem is you looking at your circumstance. Anybody 
can shout and give God praise when you don't have a problem in the world. All your bills are paid. Ain't nobody sick. Everything is going fine. But it takes somebody. In fact, let me ask you a question. Is there something in your life you've been praying for and God has still not yet answered? Is there something in your life well, before, before I let you go, let, let me take you to Paul. Paul in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Listen, listen to what Paul said. Giving thanks. Watch these words. Always. For all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, the point I'm trying to get, you don't, we don't walk around and say, I thank you I got a toothache. I thank you I got a headache. I thank you I broke my leg. I thank you. I, no, that, that's not what we're talking about. But what you have to outsmart the enemy at is that he's trying to steal your praise. He's trying to steal your joy. So you have to sometimes give God praise right in the midst of a hellish situation. Then finally, Colossians chapter 3. Verses 15, 16, and 17. Listen to Paul. And he says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, to be thankful. Yeah. Yeah. Thankful. That means that before you talk to God about give me, you ought to holler, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sometimes you got to just wake up one morning and just say, I want to thank you for waking me up. Thank you for health and strength. Thank you I had roof over my head and food on the table. Now you might have some things you want God to work out that day, but don't give God that list. You give him an attitude of thankfulness first. Paul says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with what grace in your heart to whom the Lord. Mm. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That means you might have to cross sometime. But while you crying, remember he'll wipe the tears. And you have to rise up and give God praise. Give him thanks. I, I want to tell you thank you. I, I, I wanted us to, to, to get to, to verse 7. But uh, I don't want to rush through that. I, I want us to take our time. And we're going we're gonna to pick up back at verse 7. Uh, on Next Sunday, if God is willing. Uh, all I need you to understand that Paul says, pray about what? Everything. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Pray about it. Pray, yeah. pray about your love life. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Pray about your love life. Whatever step you're getting ready to undertake, pray about it. Yeah. Get ready to shift and move a job. Pray about it. Yes. Yes. I pray you've been blessed. Yes. Yes. Woo. Ah. I, I can tell you this much. I, I know Jesus yeah. who, who died on the cross yes. Yes. has taught us a lot about prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Can you just imagine where we would be if he didn't hang on that cross? Yes. Have y'all ever thought about yes. that? Where, where would we be? Yes. But because he suffered, bled, and died, yes. but got up with all power, got yes. I got an opportunity to talk to him. Yes. Yes. I, I want to leave y'all on this note. The old folk, you say, I got a telephone yeah. in my bosom. And I can call him up whenever I get good and ready. When was your last time talking to the master? You will not let a day go by that you don't commune with God. So the night before you go to bed, I don't know what the situation going to be all day today, but tonight don't, don't, don't close your eyes. Without at least saying, God, I look back over this Sunday yes. and say, thank you, sir, thank you, sir, that you brought me through. Don't know if I'm going to be around Monday, but thank you, thank you Lord. For, today. for today. May God bless you. Yes. May God keep you.
Let us read our dismissal. Dear Lord, now that we have heard your word, help us to become doers of the word by loving others, caring for the needy, and sharing the gospel. God bless you.